It's streamer season here in central Indiana, and this week's fly is a wonderful little streamer called the Autumn Splendor. Tied these up a number of years ago when I first discovered it, and has been a nice pattern in the fall for smallmouth as well as trout. So this is a warm water and cold water fly. It has a lot going on. You've got a triple colored marabou tail, chenille body, and uh, polymered hackle. It's very, very similar to a woolly bugger or even a conehead woolly bugger, with the exception of the triple tail, um, triple colors, I should say, and the, uh, the hackle is two hackles polymered around, and the rubber legs, so. But it's a fairly simple fly to tie. There's a couple tricky parts that just take a little bit of practice and patience. And it is a very productive fly, as I said, for both warm and cold water species. So that's the Autumn Splendor. We'll go ahead and get tied. Splendor today I'm going to be using an R74 size 6 hook. This is a 4x long shank hook. You could use you know other brands if you want to or even um, say like an R75 with a straight eye or something um, even if it's a little bit longer. But before I do that I'm going to place a gold cone. This is just a medium sized gold cone on there. Uh, you can also use a copper cone if you want. You'll find that Autumn Splendors are done in all kinds of different colors. Um, but I'm just going to place the hook point in the cone, slide that on down to the eye, and then I'll place the hook in the vise. Go ahead and debarb your hook. And then I'm going to place some uh, lead wraps along the hook shank to give this a little bit more weight. Uh, for this size hook, I'm using a .020. This is a lead-free, but you certainly can use lead if you want. I'll start my lead wraps back about the point of the hook, and I'm going to put in 15. Certainly, you could put in a little more or a little less, depending on what the requirements are that you have for the lead in, uh, in your waters. Smooth those out. Then I'm going to shove all of that right up to the front. Notice that when it jams inside there, the cone takes kind of a downward slant. I like to go ahead and fiddle with this and push this back up and maybe even squish it over that lead a little bit so that I keep it more horizontal. For thread, I'm using a UTC 140 denier in an olive color. You want to use a heavy thread because we have a lot of marabou to put on this fly and we're going to need a little bit heavier thread to be able to wrap that in real tight. I'm going to go ahead and just cover up those lead wraps with some thread to kind of hold them in place. Also, when you're tying in materials, it'll give it a little bit more grip to it. I'm going to also cover up the bare hook shank with some thread wraps to give me a little bit more grip to it. I'm going to end up with my thread right about the middle of the hook shank, and I'm putting just a light coating of glue or head cement on there. This is going to help kind of hold the marabou in. Tail on this is really, really simple. As I mentioned before, the Autumn Splendor is very similar to a woolly bugger in that it has a marabou tail, a chenille body, and a polymered hackle. It's also got some other bits and parts to it. But the thing is with this, it's not just one marabou feather. It's three different marabou feathers. 
For this version of the Autumn Splendor, I'm doing an olive. So I'm going to use an olive marabou on the bottom, a yellow marabou in the middle, and another olive on top. Now, I find that you get off your strung marabou, sometimes you get these kind of wonky feathers like this one. The tip's been busted out of it, but you still have all these nice strands because I'm not looking for a real full marabou feather uh, on each of these. What I'm looking for is the three of them combined to provide a full tail. So if I can get some marabou like this one right here that's a little sparser, um, that will still give me the bottom color I'm looking for without bulking up too much. I'm going to go ahead and wet down the fibers with a little saliva just to make them more manageable. Certainly if you have these ragged tips here, you can pull those off, even those up just a little bit. I want the tail to be about a hook length from the back of the shank here. So there's my tie-in sp spot. I'll transfer it but I'm going to start wrapping right just before the lead wraps. The reason for this is I'm going to be using the marabou as kind of an underbody to keep the body of this all fairly smooth so I don't end up with bumps where, you know, I've got three stacks of marabou right here and I got this big bump where all that's tied in. So with that tied in, I'm going to lash that down to the back of the shank, and that is the first marabou color. So moving right up to behind, right at the beginning of the lead wraps, I'm going to put my yellow in, and then I'm going to put my olive in. Cue the music. As you can see, I've got my three marabou colors on here. When these dry out, they'll fluff out real well. And you can, you know, make these thicker if you want. The olive down here might be a little bit on the spar side, but that's up to you. Do notice that I tied the yellow and the upper olive all the way the full length of the shank to give me, you know, a more uniform body. However, I left about an eye width behind the, the cone. The reason for that is, is I have some chenille, some hackle, and wire to tie in up here. If I bring that all the way up to the cone, what's going to end up happening is all of that's going to get tied on at an outer diameter that's going to be about even to the cone here. You're going to have a hard time getting a whip finish in there right behind that cone to secure the fly. So that gives me a little bit of open space to tie in our materials, or I should say tie off the materials. For the body on this, there's um, some uh, gold wire. This is just a 26 gauge. It's a large size gold wire that I'm going to tie in as a rib. This is primarily to just reinforce the hackles. Um, we have two hackles we're going to tie in. Uh, 
What I like to do when I'm tying in large wire like this, um, I'll bend back part of that and, and wrap it down. Sometimes a large wire has a tendency to, even with a lot of thread wraps on it, come out. So it just helps secure it down a little bit more. So the wire goes in. Now I have some hackles that are going to go in. One quick note, some people like to put a little flashaboo in there, so you can certainly do that if you want. I would put that in prior to building out the body because the flashaboo is just going to be, in this case, like some gold um, flashaboo about the length of the tail, a couple strands on each side. After the wire goes in, we have, tame that wire down, we have our hackles that are going to go in. Okay. Not bouncing. The hackles on this, I'm using a Kehoe saddle hackle simply because I like these are nice and webby. There's there's lots of barbules in there so that it adds, it's not as stiff, it'll it'll flow a little bit better. And I'm using some longer saddle hackles off of a whiting uh, bugger pack. This is an olive grizzly and a yellow grizzly. You could do these in a solid color if you want. But what you're looking for, if you could get some strong rooster, that would also work. I don't like the schloppen. It's a little bit too soft throughout the feather. What you're going to do is you're going to match the tips of those. So I'll match the tips up. Putting them one on top of the other, I'm going to then stroke the barbs on the stem of the feather. Get this on here to show you. I'm just going to stroke those down and out of the way. That's all. You can tie these in individually if it's a little easier for you. It's up to you. I'll clip off the end here so that I've got a little handle for tying that in, a little anchor. And I'm going to tie that tip in right at the end of the body. Remember, this is similar to a woolly bugger, so we're tying it in by the tip. So we have the shorter barbs sticking out in the back. Moving up to the longer barbs up here that will collar around the front to give us a tapered profile. So my ribs in, my hackles in for the body, I am using a medium olive chenille. This is just a rayon chenille. If you've got a, a nylon chenille that you like, go ahead and use that. You could dub the body too if you want. Chenille makes it a little easier. I'll pull off the ends of that to expose the core and I'll tie in the core right on the hook shank, lashing that in and then tying all the way down to the end of the body. So that takes care of my body material. The Autumn Splendor has a number of rubber legs tied in along the body before we can put all of this body on. For the rubber legs for this, I'm just using a medium round rubber legs in a yellow color. You can vary that up to other colors as, as you change the pattern. I've already pre-cut these to about two inches in length. I can trim these back a little if I want, but for this size hook, once you see once this hackle is polymered on, I, I kind of like these. They stick out a little bit. There's a lot of movement, a lot of action to them. My thread hanging at the first spot where I'm going to tie these in, I kind of want to divide the hook shank into quarters where you're going to have some rubber legs tied in about each quarter. So there's one here, one just a little behind the middle, and then one a little farther uh, up from that. So with my thread hanging in the position for the first one, I'm going to place the midpoint of those rubber legs right on top of the hook shank. And I'm going to get three snug, not real tight wraps of thread right down across the top. I'm going to then fiddling with the legs, get three wraps in the other direction. Now this is the probably the trickiest part of this fly. You don't want to pull too hard on these because you're going to want the ability to move these around a little bit and 
finesse them so they're right on top of the hook shank and they're pretty much nice and perpendicular across the hook shank. At this point, if you wanted to, you could put some more wraps in there, but I find that it's not needed. It's seldom that I ever have any of these that are pulled out while fighting fish or while fishing it. So now I have two more rubber legs to tie in. We'll go ahead and get those tied in so we can then finish out our body. tied in. Generally I have an even space in between all of them. Having them sticking out nice and perpendicular is going to help in terms of tying in the rest of the material. As you're fishing this fly they're going to go all over the place but in terms of tying in the fly it, it uh, really helps just to have them sticking out uh, perpendicular more. So I'm going to take my chenille at this point. I'm going to start palmering that around. I want to keep these wraps fairly tight into one another. You want to get nice tight wraps right in on both sides of those rubber legs. Don't worry, like in this case right here, the chenille's pushing those legs a little bit forward there. Don't worry about it because when you come up with the next wrap right here, it's going to push them right back again. up to the cone, you're going to want to take care that we get just one nice wrap right behind the cone here, like this. Don't fill up, it's tempting to fill that space up, but remember you've got more to tie in here, um, so you need to have a little bit of space left right behind there for your hackle and your wire to tie things off. put a little bit of head cement down in here, it's going to soak down into the chenille and everything down inside that cone just to make it a little bit more durable. Now our hackle, we're going to take our hackle now and this is kind of tricky because we're going to palmer both of them at the same time. But at the same time, the fly, you know, it looks rather messy, so don't get too hung up on each wrap having to be just perfect. We'll get one right around the back, start moving on up the hook shank. You can go around or in front of the legs if you want. Here's where having those legs perpendicular comes in handy because sometimes that hackle is going to grab them. You can get in there with your scissors real easy move them out of the way real easy while you are palmering this forward.
it up to the front to the cone here. I do find if you have enough hackle in the room to get an extra wrap or half a wrap in there, just makes the, the front of this a little bit bushier, a little bit bigger profile to it. You'll bind that in, trim away the excess. Pull all those fibers back and we'll get some wraps on there to secure those. Notice I still have just a little bit of a gap here to, to bind in the wire and put my uh, whip finish in. Again, I'm going to add some more head cement to soak into those feathers and help reinforce those. The wire, when we bind this in, can be, get kind of tricky because we're going to counter wrap this. The hackle went on as I polymered away from me. This one, I want to bring it under and go the other direction. Plus, I'm only going to get about four wraps of this wire. I want it to actually come in at a little more of an angle so it goes over the wraps of hackle and helps to reinforce them. So I'm going to stretch this out. I may have to move this around and weave it a little bit to get it down in between the legs and the hackles without smashing them down, especially when I get up towards the front. And we can pick some of those out later if that happens. So I generally go around and in between each of the legs and bring it around. And by the time I get back around underneath, up front, I can lash this down on, on the underside of the hook. This is a thicker wire. You can certainly helicopter and twist this off if you want. I find it's a little bit better to just go ahead and use some snips and get that off and then tuck that little bit right inside the cone there. We'll put in a few wraps to secure that. We'll put in a six or seven turn whip finish. Move some of this out of the way. And some more head cement. So this is, a, it's a very buggy fly. It's, you know, it, it's not, as far as streamers go, anything that's, you know, finessed real nice and pretty, but it is very, very effective. As I mentioned, some of the hackle fibers got wrapped down by the wire. That's fine. You can take your bodkin. You can pick some of those out if you want. I don't get too hung up on that um, simply because they'll get busted off. Some of them as time goes by as you're fishing this and it all looks nice and buggy as it is. So Here I say I don't get hung up on it, and here I am fiddling with it. So there you go. That is the Autumn Splendor. Notice my tail has dried up, so it's all fluffed out some more. You can trim these legs down a little bit if you want if they're just a little bit long but i kind of like them long again this is the olive color you can do this in a brown um, and yellow if you want or even like a brown and orange i think works real well you know, if this is fish down near the bottom, it could be interpreted as a sculpin, maybe even a crayfish. 
the brown and orange certainly could. Um, midstream, it could be any number of bait fish or even some, I, this time of year, we still have a few big terrestrials around. So who knows what the fish see this as, but it has a lot of movement in the water, a lot of action, it does very well. And that is the Autumn Splendor. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.